In their search for rich pickings, the boys' next stop is around 40 miles northeast in Stroud, Gloucestershire, where Drew's arranged to view a new and up-and-coming antique centre. We're off to the Malt House Collective. Now, I've been told by three or four dealers that I really rate, yeah, that this is good. OK. Like, really good. And they're, they've got strong sales going on. The Malt House Collective does sound like a jazz band, though. <laughs> they're turning over plenty of stock. You know, it's well worth a look. And everybody's been saying to me, have you been, have you been, have you been, have you been? Where five Cotswold Valleys meet, sits the market town of Stroud, where in late 2017, an antique centre opened in a disused 18th century malt house. Over two floors and 14,000 square feet, an increasingly well-renowned variety of antique and vintage desirables are for sale. One of the vendors at the Malt House Collective is dealer Jeremy Russell. What makes the Malt House Collective different is that the people that are in here have all got different tastes from different periods and different parts of the world. And unlike a lot of other places, this is a really, really eclectic mix. I'm sure when Drew arrives, he's going to be overwhelmed by the amount of stock that we've got in this building. And I'm sure he's got to find something here that he likes. Hello. How are you doing? Drew. Drew. Oh, yeah. Tea. Tea. Good you to doing? see you both. OK. Nice to see you. Can we have a little grand tour? Yeah, no problem at all. That's what we're here for. Great. Very nicely laid out. It's well laid out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Easy yeah, to get really out, nice. easy to see. Really like those straight away. I've had some of these before. Yeah. Now, there's That's something fun. I have to check here, Drew, if I remember correctly from the last time you had these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. They're really comfy. Oh, yeah. They're nice. Literally 30 foot inside the door. I see this fab pair of leather armchairs. Late 60s, 70s, I think. The leather is very worn, but attractive still. They're still very comfortable. This pair of 1960s rosewood and leather armchairs were designed by influential Norwegian furniture designer Sigurd Ressel for Scandinavian makers Vartne Möbler. Upholstered in wear-worn leather, if their frames are sound, they could be worth around £750 each. They're actually falling apart. There, uh, look. Actually, not even, not even jointed together. No. How much are they? Got 995 on them. Oof. They've had some bodgery gone on to the frame underneath. So take the seats out, you can see where the joints are coming apart, and they've just, instead of pushing it back together again, they've just filled it full of glue. I'll tell you what I can do on Drew. Yeah. We'll do... Sub 750 for the... Is there any, any movement on that, just because of the work needed? How does 700 sound? You can do 700 on the pair. What do you think? Nice chairs. Need work, though. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, that, was, well, that was quick, isn't it? We're only 30 foot in. Very good, yeah. very good. 700 quid for those, well, I'm, we're not going to make a fortune on them, but no, one of those things that I'm always banging on about, that you can literally put them in any setting and they'd look good. You know, 18th century cottage, brand new flat. They're going to work, aren't they? This is very nice. Look at that, it's had a vice put in it sometime. Yeah. Look, somebody's put... Somebody's, it's been a workbench. Alongside the two chairs is a wonderful splayed leg German centre table a 19th century one, but it looks 17th century or a little bit earlier, but it isn't. It's been outside for a long time and somebody even had it as a workbench, but very, very attractive and, and a great size. What are we looking at? Do 600. That's... Uh, I was hoping 600. it was going to be five and a half. It's where I want it to be. Um, Can we go to 580? Yeah, we'll do 580. Yeah. Marvellous. Thank you. 580 for the table. Again, uh, on that one, I'm not going to squeeze loads out of it. 780? You know? Not massive profits, but in, more than enough for me. Cracking stuff. This is a new centre for me to come to. It, it's got lots of space. It's warm. The light's good. There's 60 dealers here. That's the normal sort of thing you're going to find at an antique centre. But amongst it, I'm seeing some really good pieces straight away. <laughs> With two deals done, Drew heads upstairs. OK. And something else catches his eye.
Can I get this out? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. yeah. We head upstairs, and within two minutes, I'm looking at an absolutely cracking piece of furniture. Wow. Just the, the, the more you look at it, the better it gets. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the sharpness of the carving above the top of the leg, at the, above the chevron, look at that. Just look at that. And then you've got all the little clover leaves. Right, it's going to do its trick now, is it? A stupendously good quality English card table. Just can't believe my luck. That is absolutely lovely. It is the sort of thing that I would love to find every single day, but you might find three to five pieces of it a year if you're really lucky. It has this wonderful manufacture. It has almost, almost perfect state of preservation. The only thing that needs doing is the green beige liner uh, to the gaming table has been redone really badly. So I'll redo that. Uh, yeah, a happy, happy man. This hand-carved card table in Pollard Oak was probably made by esteemed makers Crace of London in the 1870s. Boasting a flip top and in need of only minor restoration to its bays, it could be worth around £3,000. Absolutely beautiful. How much are they asking for it? We've got three fifty on it. Oof. Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is at a Gloucestershire Antique Centre, where he's spoilt for choice in his search for the best items at the most advantageous prices. Can I get this out? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. A beautifully carved 19th century card table is the latest extraordinary find to catch his eye. Absolutely beautiful. How much are they asking for it? They've got 350 on it. That's you sure hidden... that's not 1350 No, quid? that's the hidden gem. Uh, well, I'm going to have to ask for some discount. Yeah. I know it sounds terrible, but it's my job. Yeah. 350 um, what can you do? I have to be quite hard, cos you like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've given the game away, haven't yeah. I, really? 330 All right, go on, I'll pay it. Thank you. I'm staggered how lucky I am to find it. And then for the price, £330, I think we paid for it. It's value. Uh, it, it would exceed putting a naught on the end of what I've just paid for it. It's that good. This stuff is out there. Get out and look for it. This is my happy face. Good. You'll have a good drive back, won't you? <laughs> you can sit in the back of the van on the way back. Oh, my God, look at these. <gasps> Tea! Look at those! Wow! What a thing! Is it split? I think the they. I think they pull. Oh, I, just want to... I think they pull apart. Oh, it's just great. <laughs> isn't it? It's really nice. You can just sort of roll around on it. Oh. They came from Covent Garden, the office shoe shop. Really? In Covent Garden, yeah. They are fab. Yeah. I really Probably nineteen like eighties ish. Yeah. Give or take. We have these two enormous. Bizarre, I would call them bonquette seating units from the centre of a shoe shop. They're just crazy, but bear with me on this. Imagine them in the entranceway to a very plush hotel. But also, imagine if you've got a huge room, isn't that the coolest coffee table ever? Just stacked with books. You know, just so cool, such a great thing. How much are they? Uh, 1800 for the pair. Or, so that's not yeah. suck the fun out of that, isn't it? <laughs> well, we, you know, eh? We're, there, we're here to sell. Not 1800 quid, you're not. Where are you with it? I, I, no, I'd have to chop lumps off it. Yeah? Yeah. I think they're flying a bit of a flag there, to be honest with you. How does a deal of the day, probably of the month, 950? We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you with it? And I'll go and see what we can do. A very cheeky 600 quid. I will go and have a word. Tell you what they are. They're yeah. Capri interior chairs. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? <laughs> yeah. 
You had a Capri on the drive, that sofa in your lounge. Oh, just relaxing like yeah. that in your slacks. Could be your day if you can go up a touch, 725. I mean, they, they've come down a fair wedge on that. You're a six. I'm at six. Um, so seven's it. It's, uh, that, that's got to be... What do you think? Because it's, it's not mine and I can't... Uh... Sometimes they're so odd that you have to have a bit of a... Yeah. ..bit of a think. It's good odd, though. Yeah, go on, we'll have them. OK, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Must be mad. Try for 600, end up getting them for 700, fine. For that, I'll take a chance. Drew's contacts have told him that it isn't just inside where there are bargains to be had. Can we have a quick look outside at yeah, this stuff? good idea. Bit of garden gear. Nice looking, isn't it? Even with the bits missing. Yeah. She'd find it difficult to hold a tune like that, wouldn't she? <laughs> Don't pick her, she's harmless. That's nice. What we'd call it is it's this form of Arcadian romance, which was more akin to the 18th century, when they dress up as little Bo Peep and wander around and all that nonsense. It's that type of thing, or a fable. It's got that thing going on with it. Carved in England in the manner of an 18th century fable, this marble figure probably dates instead to the mid to late 19th century. Nevertheless, even unrestored, it could still be worth around £400. So for £240 pounds yeah. for that young lady, how much can you want for her? Um... Cos, you know... Yeah. 160 Thank you very much. OK. What a day. <laughs> you know, you can't make this up. It's like a hundred... How much? £160. Pound. And it is marble, isn't it? Yes. It is 19th century, yes. Has it got an attractive quality to it? Damn right it has. Any day doing my job is a good thing. You know, it's a great job. But every now and again, those, those good days turn into phenomenal days. And today, it was one of those, you know? Bought great things, bought across the board stuff I can sell. I think we got very, very lucky on that table. So much stuff to look through, but you always keep looking. A, a wonderful find, a real right up there. Thoroughly enjoyed it today with Drew and T. I think he's had a phenomenal day. I think he's probably found a lot more than he expected to find and got some really, really good things which he wouldn't have expected to come out of here with. Happy with that? Yeah, amazing. Nice and easy. Yeah. Straightforward. Yeah, see good why buying. it was recommended. Yes. But it's one of those places now. I mean, over the last 10 years, I've seen an explosion in, in, in dealers sort of ganging together and, and making these collectives. And it works. Back in Conway, Drew's latest buys are already hitting the shop floor. While on Drew's instruction at his workshop, upholsterer Craig Hughes is ready to replace the Gloucestershire card table's bays. Well, this is the original green bays, or maybe not the original, because it's not been done professionally. And you can see here where it's been cut short. And on this side, it's overlapping the polished wood. So I need to remove this before I can do anything else. Skillfully keeping the scraper from scratching the visible wooden edge, Craig frees the old bays from its adhesive. Hey. Right, that's that off. All that to scrape off now. The next tool is this, and it's got like a, a Stanley blade in it, and it's much finer than the scraper. It's important for me to get this table as smooth as possible because any tiny, tiny pieces underneath there will be exaggerated through the bays. So that little tiny crumb or piece of dirt that's underneath it will just appear to be a big mound. After a final sanding, Craig selects the new bays. I carry several colours of bays in stock, and Drew has really specified he wants red. So I'll just have a look what that looks like on the job. Yeah, I think that's going to look nice, especially against this wood. Craig cuts the bays to size and uses cardboard to protect the wood surround from glue damage. I'm going to put some glue onto the table and then a light coating on the bays. 
Now, if I get this wrong, I've got to scrap the base and then start all the sanding process again. So, wish me luck with this one. Final stage now, trimming this excess off. And just literally tidying up the little strands that are hanging off. Very final part now. Good old faithful clothes brush. One important thing is check that it actually folds up. Okay, it folds up. Now let's see if it opens. Yep, no problem at all. That's great. That's ready. normal sort of thing you're going to find at an antique center but amongst it I'm seeing some really good pieces straight away with two deals done drew heads upstairs okay and something else catches his eye can I get this out yeah of course you can yeah, yeah. We head upstairs, and within two minutes, I'm looking at an absolutely cracking piece of furniture. Wow. Just the, the, the more you look at it, the better it gets. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the sharpness of the carving above the top of the leg, at the, above the chevron, look at that. Just look at that. And then you've got all the little cloverleaf. 
Right, it's going to do its trick now, is it? A stupendously good quality English card table. Just can't believe my luck. That is absolutely lovely. It is the sort of thing that I would love to find every single day, but you might find three to five pieces of it a year if you're really lucky. It has this wonderful manufacture. It has almost, almost perfect state of preservation. The only thing that needs doing is the green beige liner uh, to the gaming table has been redone really badly. So I'll redo that. Uh, yeah, a happy, happy man. This hand-carved card table in Pollard Oak was probably made by esteemed makers Crace of London in the 1870s. 